I grew up in a small farming town in Zimbabwe, Harare, in the area that I grew up in. It was very conservative. And in school, I remember I was on the bus. This boy says he's the captain of the bus. And I'm like, who appointed you to be captain? And he says, keep quiet. And I remember we had a fight. So that was my first fight, really fighting and saying, you can't do that. But, you know, boys were taught to be confident, to take leadership. And I remember always resisting and saying, you will not tell me to keep quiet in a bus that I have paid for. So I've always had this inside of me to fight patriarchy, even to uplift other people in the community. I also want to hear about what inspired you to be working on issues on women's economic empowerment. I definitely always had a feeling that I wanted to do everything that boys could do, busting in there and making inroads for women in different fields. When I was a teenager, I told my mom that I was going to be the first female chairman of the Federal Reserve Board in the United wow, States. Wow, wow. I know, which is like every <laughs> little girl's dream. Didn't quite work out that way, but I had lots of ambitions. The project that I work on is about unpaid care work, trying to make visible the invisible economy that women have traditionally specialized in the work that's completely outside of traditional economics. So cleaning, cooking, household management, household maintenance, those are what we call indirect unpaid care work. But then there's direct care work. So that's direct care of children, elders. It also includes volunteering. So that's sort of care for community and all done on an unpaid basis. Within the African context, women travel long distances to get water. They're expected to take child care facilities. They cook with no assistance, with no sharing of roles. And when you bring this up in the spaces that we are in, the men are like, you want me to pay for what a woman is supposed to do? Anyway, because of HIV and AIDS, there was a lot of taking care of the people who were sick. A lot of women were doing this work, but they were never recognized. So the work we do sometimes is to say the care economy is actually part of the economy. And it's an economy that should actually be recognized in its full force. What happened during the peak years of the AIDS crisis is a good example of why this unpaid care work needs to be mainstreamed in terms of measurement. Because... When policymakers figure out how much money to allocate for addressing a problem, part of how they figure that out is how much it costs them. And so if those costs only include loss of GDP or how much money for doctors and nurses are going to be needed, then they're not accurately gauging how much that crisis is costing them. So maybe they're under-investing in the solution. So what we're hoping to do is to include the costs that have previously been unmeasured. So the additional time that all of those caregivers had to allocate to their family members who were sick or the grandchildren whose parents have died, there's a very large extra unpaid care work burden on households in the light of a disaster. I really like speaking to you, Gretchen, and really learning a lot around the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.